So welcome to a quick tutorial about Creative Book Builder, one of the best apps uh, for creating your own content that I've come across on the iPad. The good news is that it's now available from the Google Play Store, uh, just in the last few weeks in fact, so you can even get it for Android. So when we open it up we come to this very simple screen. If we tap in the top left hand side up here on the books we get a second menu screen here that gives us the books that we've already created and if we tap on this button up here, the plus button, we can create a new one of our own. So here I've just uh, tapped for the plus sign for a new one and I've just written in my title tutorial book and I press up here in the top right on the save button and you can see now that my book has appeared in my list of books. Okay so if we select that tutorial book and press close what we then get is this screen here which is belongs to the book itself. Now the first thing I'm going to do is tap the plus button up here because that enables me to add a chapter. Usually the first chapter is done for you but anymore you have to press this up here. A little dialog box will come up asking you whether you want to add a chapter or a section. Just press which one ever one is appropriate. You can also see that in the next screen, once you've done that, on the right hand side here we're trying to add elements. There are two ways of doing this. We can just tap this button here or we can tap the plus button. At the moment I'm just going to add element. And you can see that there are a variety of different types of element that I can add. We've got text here which involves titles, paragraph marks, downs, HTML. We've also got media types here, so I can add photos, I can add videos, audio recordings. Uh, for instance, if you are making a book for a blind person, it's actually possible to do it. Uh, we can add music. We can also add files from various different places, um, like Dropbox or Google Drive. Uh, it's worth noting underneath here what type of files are supported. You've got certain types of picture files, You've got certain types of video files, but they must be MP4, and certain types of songs, etc., etc. Remember, this is all Apple at the moment. The Google version of this might be a little bit more flexible on the file types that it allows. Finally, we've got the miscellaneous column. This has a whole load of really, really cool little things that you could do, uh, which I'll come back to later. For the moment, I'm just going to go for some text. I've gone for a title text and this dialog box comes up and this area here is where you write your title or your text or whatever it is and then save it and it gets it gets saved so that's your first section of content next we come to the top right hand corner again if we press the plus button we can add some more elements so we might add this time let's say a paragraph when I do that, the paragraph dialog box comes up and we just tap below the cursor to make that appear. We write in whatever it is that we want. You will also notice that there are a variety of buttons down at the bottom here. We've got bold, italics, underline, obvious ones, but we've also got fonts and styles that we can put in. If I go to the font button, for instance, I have several options of types of font, size of font and colour that I can change and then save up here in the top right hand side. We've also got this little button down here that the arrow is pointing to which gives you a list of actions like bulleted lists or numbered lists. And again once you've saved it this just appears in your content box. If we add another element up here, this time I'm going to go for a media element and I'm going to go for an image. When I press image, this dialog box comes up 
and I can see all the different types of photos that I've got on this device. If you can't see any photos, then this is your little warning down here. It basically means that you haven't set up location services, and it tells you how to do it, just follow the instructions. Notice you've got another little option down there. This red camera means you can take a photo there and then. If I tap uh, where my source is, I then just need to select the photos that I want. So for instance, this one, I'm going to go for the giraffe one. You'll see a little tick there and then press done at the top and it will give me that photo. The same process goes for videos. You just select the different type of media, the video media, and it will show you all the videos that you have on your device. Again, select the one that you want, press done, and both of these now appear in your content box. So another element we could add is the file element. Again, uh, I've explained that you can take it from Google, Dropbox or Google Drive or from a particular URL, but only certain file types will be taken in the Apple version of this. As I say, Google might be a little bit more forgiving. The miscellaneous column is really, really useful because depending on your subject, you might want to put tables in, you might want to put a, a question in if you're making this an interactive book, but there's also equations, uh, links, you can put direct links in, you can paste stuff from the uh, clipboard, you've got QR codes, more about that in a second, you can go directly for YouTube videos, quizlets or lists. I'm going to go for a YouTube video here. And this dialog box comes up asking me for the URL. Well, I don't know about you, but I never remember what the URL is. So let's press that for the moment. And we can now type something into a search bar, and it searches through YouTube videos. So I've typed in hippos, and I've got a whole load of videos about hippos here. Let's try this hippo that lives in a house one. And it comes up with the exact URL that I need. And it also gives me a little preview there just to, for me to check. If I think that's the right one, it's got a hippo in it, it must be the right one. I'm just going to press save and off I go. Another interesting feature once you've added a variety of elements is to use the glossary. Now this is really good for A-level and Key Stage 4 students if you want them to remember key words. If they're putting them in the book already, you might as well get them to use the glossary and put the definitions in so that you, they can remind themselves at any time. So if I press the glossary and then press the little plus symbol up here, I can go first of all to the left hand side and input my term. And then this dialog box will come up here, which is where I put the definition. So I just tap it, type my definition into the dialog box, save it up here in the top right, and it will create a glossary entry for me. Now if I want to have a look at the book itself, I can use this preview button here, and you can see what I get here is uh, a preview of the entire thing as it is. Now, it's not in pages just yet, it's just in one long scroll of text, and that might not be satisfactory. So we can then have a look at publishing it. Before you publish it, very often it will ask you about the book settings. Now, this is more if you're going to publish it officially, um, but you can also put in things like uh, cover image, uh, book information, uh, for instance, you might ha have a deal with a publisher or something, and you might have a USB number, not a USB, what do they call it? An ISBN, that's what you call it. Um, that's all put into this section here. Finally, remember down there, in the left-hand side, there was a section on importing into this book. Now, this is where you can actually take full documents from Google Drive, Dropbox, or EPUBs that have already been done from, say, other people or from your own content and import them into this particular book that you're creating. Once you've done that, the little button down here, the publish button, uh, will bring us this dialog box. And you can see we've got a variety of formats that we've, we've got. 
we can first of all uh, publish it as an EPUB. Now this is an electronic uh, reader which will be, you can access this from anything like a Kindle, a mobile phone, any mobile device basically. The advantage of this over the PDF is obviously the PDF is paper based, you can't have any of the interactive functionality such as the videos or the music. So having pressed generate the book, um, I can go for EPUB version 3 or 2, personally I go for 3 because I don't know the difference, and then you just press start processing and it will create that very, very quickly. When the process is complete, you can press a preview here, and there are a variety of ways that we can then use this book. For instance, we could email it to ourselves, we could upload it to Dropbox, Google, FTP servers, we could share it to devices, etc, etc, or we could export it to iTunes. It's completely up to you what you're going to do with this book. When you've exported it, it will usually go straight into the iBooks um, app. And if you open up the iBooks app, you will see your book, it will probably be the newest one there, that's my tutorial book, and if I tap on that, I can now see my book with all its pages, including the ones with the pretty photos and the videos. Let's go back for a second and look at the PDF option. If I choose that and generate the PDF, again I can preview the book here and it will give me a choice of different um, apps. Whatever apps you have on your iPad that can read it will come up here. So you might want to read it in Dropbox or Evernote or iBooks or whatever it is. You select the one you want. The other option is to email the book or to share it to a device. And there are several ways of doing this. Tap on either of them. And here are three or four ways. One little ingenious one is a QR code. Now these are uh, quick response codes that basically with a smartphone or an iPad you could, uh, somebody else could photograph and it will take them to the link for this book. Alternative, slightly less techy ways are to email the URL to people or to copy the URL and give that to people and that will be a direct link to the book. As you can see that comes straight up. I didn't put a cover image on it so it looks a little bit boring at the minute. If I go to the top right hand side we've got an export button there and again that gives me all of my options. I could print, I could email it or I could open it in several different apps. And that's it. Hopefully you'll get a lot out of it. If you want to any questions answered just um, drop me an email.